Man, are we live? Why did you say nothing, you pumpkin pie haircut a freak? Give me that camera, man. You're fired. Get out of here. Film it when I'm eating. <laughs> So for this week's video, I'm going to bring you guys a part two of the Harbor Freight trailer, which I know you all love so much. Also, some giveaways coming up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us again at Motorview. Part two with the Harbor Freight trailer. Let's go ahead and give you a review. This is the exact configuration I had when I had loaded the bike up on it. Um, I know I joked around and said it was towed by the Camaro, but you guys know those things only tow 500 pounds or less. I wouldn't even recommend towing anything more than that. So let me get out of the light here so you guys can see. So uh, all the wiring on it, you know, it was pretty simple to wire. Everything was, was really easy. Um, I just put some electrical tape around the, the end of the harness here. Um, the chains came with it, which tells you in the instructions step-by-step step where to put those. And then on this uh, release here, uh, this ball release, whatever you want to call it, I actually put a lock in here um, just for peace of mind um, so it wouldn't pop off. It's like a little um, a little lock that goes in where the pin would go. I just stored, I stored the pin right here, as you can see. So I did a few locking mechanisms there just uh, for some peace of mind. And uh, this is how the bike was. Now the bike's a little bit broken down, as you can see. I've already been putting in some work to it. So this, uh, this wheel chalk here did really well. It's by Max Hall, and I got it off of Amazon. A lot of these parts I'm gonna be sharing with you guys or that I already shared with on part one already came from Amazon, as you probably know. So now I did buy some bigger eye bolts here uh, because the ones I had weren't as long. And I like this, the reason why I bought this wheel chalk is because I needed a way for it to mount to the the trailer itself, the metal. So there were a couple other variations I saw, but this one had this little T-bar, this crossbar up here, if you will. And I like how it had these bolts here because I knew it was gonna, if I mounted it flush up here at the front of the trailer, I knew it was gonna bolt right into the metal. So when I bought these longer eye bolts, um, this bar already comes with some threads and some other bolts, but I didn't use those. So I put my own eye bolts in here and bought some longer ones to go all the way through. So as you can see, it's quite a bit of some travel here. Um, and you gotta just go through the top of the frame here because the frame, this is open on the back side. So if you wanna just get through the top part where you can put a nut on it, you're looking at going through probably at least four inches, at least four inches there, uh, maybe less, but I left, some, I left some extra thread on the end of the eye bolt there. So go to Home Depot or Lowe's and measure out a, about a four inch bolt or so and you'll be solid. Uh, what else? There's a couple other things that I added. I actually didn't even do anything with the eye bolts. I thought I would use them for some straps, maybe for the handlebars, but I didn't because these heavy duty 3 8 inch D-rings I put here, these actually I used for the handlebar mounts and I used my straps and the straps I have were from uh, Rhino USA ratchet straps and they worked really well. I really recommend getting those too. They had nice, they had nice clamps on the end of them. Um, or they didn't have nice clamps. They had nice like, like safety levers, almost like these on the back here where, you know, if it, if it moves around or starts to come up, it's not coming off because this little safety lever here, I don't know what you want to call it, but safety lever, that's what I'm calling it. So that, the D-rings are what I use to attach the, the rhino straps up here to the handlebars. And I just linked them. I kind of crossed them here. Use this one here. And this is the new handlebars I put on, but I used the right one here to run to the left side and then vice versa, the left side to the right side of the trailer and strap that down. And then the bike didn't even move. Honestly, you can see here with the wheel chalk, it's not going anywhere. It's sitting up in that chalk just fine because once you wheel it past this part, this um, this rolls back and forth and it's gonna kind of lock itself right up into this. So you get a couple different holes to play around with. If you got smaller wheels, larger wheels, I moved it back just one because when I put it in all the way forward, I realized it was a little too far forward and there's only one spot for the back portion. So keep that in mind. This is a uh, 19 inch wheel. So 
As we move down the trailer, this is my ramp that I bought also from Amazon. Folds in half, comes in handy. I didn't have anybody to help me load the bike, so if you have guys to help load, then it's obviously a win, but when you're just by yourself, it's pretty easy to, uh, to load this trailer, or excuse me, to load the bike up onto the trailer because the trailer's only sitting, you know, 14 inches off the off the back so if you can lift a bike 14 inches up more power to you one more thing i want to mention about the tires and the axle i kept checking every so often when i would stop at rest stops or bathroom breaks or whatever and i would feel the outside of the hubs here and they would stay pretty warm um obviously not too hot to the touch and this trailer is pretty dirty from the, the, the drive you can still see I haven't cleaned it off so the the hubs did really well axle did well um, they do come pre-greased I did throw a little bit more grease in on the back side of the hub there just for safe measures but they when you it did come put together and I took these caps off and made sure that there was grease and you could see the grease kind of protruding from the, the bearings there so they did come pre-greased for me, which uh, was adequate enough. It didn't heat up uh, too hot for the, the trip. So that was good. So the trailer did really well on the trip. I went probably 1,500 miles or so, and I didn't have any issues. I stopped every now and again to check the, the straps. Those rhino straps didn't budge one inch. So I did also strap the back. <clears throat> Be careful when you guys strap down the top here or excuse me, the back, because if you use straps on the top, you're working against your shocks. So whenever you hit bumps, it's going to loosen those straps and kind of tighten it back up and they're just going to flex a little bit. So I would recommend either going through the wheel well or somewhere uh, like the frame here, maybe lower frame, wheel, and then again to these D-rings. And then it's not going to move at all because now you don't have any suspension that's going to go up and down when you're going through bumps. So very happy, satisfied with the trailer. It did really well, and I would recommend it to anyone looking for a small 4x8 utility trailer that is reasonably priced. Uh, I think I got it for $349 or $399. So there is a step up from this trailer. There's a, a XL or something of that nature, and it loads, I think, 1,700 pounds. This one can only load 1,195 pounds. So I chose to use a bike to load with and the bike's probably no more than 500 five, 600 if that very very satisfied with the trailer thank you harbor freight solid pick that i got with you guys there and uh anyone looking forward to utility trailer like that i'm sure it can have more uses than just a bike as long as you properly weigh it out and tow it with the proper tow capacity so i also want to bring something to you guys right now is i'm doing a giveaway for some super clean products the ones I did review in my last video here, and very excited. The review of those was amazing. Uh, their products work, and I used a wheel cleaner and some uh, degreaser on the, the garage floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a giveaway with a couple of these products. They're gonna send you a few in a box. What you're gonna need to do is though, you're gonna do a little homework. You gotta go back into the part one of this Harbor Freight video and look at one, how long it took me to put the trailer together, and two, what color stain did I use on the wood. Take those two answers, comment down below, make sure you subscribe, and in two weeks, I'm gonna pick a random winner off the comments below, and make sure your email is also in your YouTube page so that when I pick the winner, I can go into your page and contact you via email so there's no personal information shared. Can't wait to see who's gonna be the winner of these products. Thanks for joining in on Motor Views Part Two, Harbor Freight Trailer. Until next time.